Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 10th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Patch Tuesday, and we got patches from Microsoft for 55 different vulnerabilities. Six of the vulnerabilities are rated critical, four were previously disclosed, and then we have two vulnerabilities that have already been exploited, according to Microsoft. The first of the two already exploited vulnerabilities is a CVE 2021-4232-1. And this vulnerability affects well of all places Microsoft Exchange. Now, this vulnerability isn't quite as bad as some of the prior vulnerabilities that we have seen in Exchange. A user needs to be authenticated in order to exploit it. But once authenticated, this vulnerability allows for arbitrary code execution due to an improper validation of commandlet arguments. So this would be something where uh, someone fished some credentials and is now trying to get full access uh, to your exchange server. The fix, as usual, move to Outlook 365 and forget about running exchange on site. At least that appears to be the standard fix that most organizations employ these days once their exchange server is is compromised. The second already exploited vulnerability is CVE 2021-4229-2, and this is a security feature bypass in Microsoft Excel. What this comes down to is that it's possible for an attacker to get you to execute code in Excel without a warning. Now, there have been a couple um, exploits like this disclosed recently, not sure if this is exactly what's being patched here, but given, of course, uh, how many attacks we see coming in with Office macros, whether it's Excel or whether it's Word, uh, this is certainly something that you should pay attention to and patch quickly. Again, this one is already being exploited. As usual for these types of vulnerabilities, Microsoft only considers them important because there is still some user interaction involved as the user opens the document. But of course, there's now a lot less interaction involved because the user no longer sees any specific warnings. The highest CVSS rating this month goes to a vulnerability in Microsoft's Virtual Machine Bus or VM Bus CVE 2021-2644. Three, uh, this vulnerability is exploited if the attacker is gaining access to a guest VM and then sends a special message to the VM bus and with that exploits the host the virtual machine is running on. And finally, we do have another RDP vulnerability, but this vulnerability is not in the server. It's in the client and would require a victim to connect to a malicious RDP server. This could potentially happen via a link that's being received in an email. So certainly exploitable and certainly not that difficult to trick a user to connect to a particular RDP server, even though they're not usually using RDP. But overall, the one vulnerability to really watch out for is the Excel vulnerability. I think that's the one that's probably most likely going to get exploited and causing problems going forward. So make sure you patch it. And of course, the Exchange Server vulnerability, if you haven't moved yet to a cloud solution and still run an Exchange Server on-premise, that's another one that you probably should patch quickly. Adobe today delivered uh, patches for uh, three of its products, uh, RoboHelp Server, Adobe InCopy, and Adobe's Creative Cloud. But well, it's not just Microsoft and Adobe who has important vulnerabilities to patch. Uh, we also got a real interesting blog post by JFrog, and they looked at vulnerabilities in BusyBox. If you're not familiar with BusyBox, it's sort of an all-in-one binary that you often find in embedded Linux systems. It essentially merges uh, multiple command line tools in one binary, making it more memory and disk space efficient. And and uh, 
this binary, this busy box binary, you find on pretty much all of the embedded Linux systems. So routers, cameras, uh, point of sale systems, and anything like that, you typically find busy box instead of the individual uh, binaries. Well, uh, they found a total of 14 new vulnerabilities, one in man, the manual command, one in the LCMA, UN LCMA, so compression, decompression, uh, live functions, and then a shell, hush, as well as Org. The good news here is it's not necessarily all that easy to exploit those vulnerabilities remotely. You need to, for example, be able to craft a particular command line argument for these different tools, which basically requires some kind of web application or something along those lines that would expose these particular functions in BusyBox. So exploitation is certainly uh, not impossible, uh, but uh, probably highly dependent on a particular device and the software installed on it. But definitely keep watching out for firmware updates for affected devices. At this point, you can pretty much assume that any Linux embedded device that uses BusyBox is vulnerable. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And remember, I'm doing these every day because people are listening. So get more people to listen. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.